Hey there, space patriots. Welcome to this Tuesday episode of SpaceX in the News. Let's get right to it. So last week, we covered all that has happened to Booster 7 since its trip down to the orbital launch site, you know, with its leak checks, its cryo tests, and its stress testing. And while I was filming last Friday's video, Lab Padre was live filming Booster 7 being lifted off the Can Crusher test and what we assumed, or what I assumed, was its transport back to the orbital launch table. Well, it turns out what they did was they placed the booster onto a transport mount and hauled her back to the construction yard. Now, this could be for one of two reasons. One, the test didn't go so well and they have fixes to make, kind of like SLS at the moment, or everything went well and they're about to equip the Raptor 2 engines. Hopefully I have an answer for you come our next episode on Friday. After 7's arrival at the high bay, Starship Gazer snapped a pic of Booster 8's upper LOX tank, making room for its predecessor. A lot of stacking activity happening with 8 lately. But the big news of the week so far is that the new Star Factory building has begun sprouting vertically. We briefly mentioned the new Star Factory building a couple months back when they first started laying out the foundation and how this is going to house the new Starship assembly line now that things are getting more streamlined. SpaceX is building a second one at the Cape as we speak. I do have a little bit of Polaris Dawn news for you. Commander Jared Isaacman visited Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University last Friday to speak to their students and checking out the university's Space Technologies Laboratory where their student team is working on a camera system that will film the first commercial spacewalk done by Jared's team. He also dropped a little bit of news on his Twitter concerning the new EVA suits. They were just at Hawthorne visiting the suit lab and, and hopefully they'll be releasing pictures soon. When they do, I'll make sure to cover them here on this channel. SpaceX is making great progress on the IVA to EVA transformation, new materials for durability, thermal and micrometeoroid and orbital debris, new joints for mobility, safety features, etc. On Easter Sunday, SpaceX launched the latest spy satellite for the National Reconnaissance Office and Roll 85. This is the first time that the government agency has reused a Falcon 9 booster. Its previous mission was Enroll 87, and it lived to fly another day after successfully landing at Landing Zone 4 at Vandenberg Space Force Base, California. Elon twatted that SpaceX's Falcon team is making great progress with their turnaround mission, aiming for a five-day launch cadence with many performance and refurbishment improvements. You know, this mission marked the 114th successful landing of a Falcon 9 booster, and not only have a lot of private companies noticed the credibility that has led to a decrease in price, a lot of these government agencies, like NASA, has as well. This month, NASA moved their upcoming payload, the Surface Water and Ocean Topography Satellite, from a new Falcon 9 booster to a used one, which to me makes total sense because not only is it cheaper, I guess in this case for we the American taxpayers, but also which one is more worthy of your trust? A brand spanking new Falcon 9 rocket fresh out of the factory or one that has launched at least one other time has proven itself to work, you know, especially these days when the front runner boosters have launched up to 12 times. But the next Falcon launch is another Starlink mission, currently slated for April 21st, which is Thursday at 11.15 a.m. Eastern Time. This week it was reported that SpaceX is working with commercial airlines to one day provide Starlink service to their customers in flight. Vice President Hofeller emphasized that they are currently going through the certifications needed to get their terminals known as antennas approved for a variety of aircraft. And all he said about these Starlink terminals or antennas is that they're a lot smaller and lighter than what you and I would purchase for our homes. On deck after Thursday's Starlink launch is Crew-4. SpaceX and NASA have rolled out the Falcon rocket with Dragon equipped to the launch pad. It's supposed to undergo a static fire tomorrow. Teams are proceeding toward a 526 AM Eastern time liftoff this Saturday. And it's always subject to change, but as of now, the crew of Axiom-1, the first 100% private crew passenger mission to the International Space Station, is scheduled to depart the ISS tonight around 10 p.m. Eastern with a splashdown off the coast of Florida no earlier than 3.24 p.m. tomorrow. And now a word from our sponsor, My Patriot Supply. If you've been paying attention to the news lately, or hell, if you've been doing any shopping whatsoever, you've noticed that inflation is up, way up like setting records every month over the past couple of months. The economic experts are saying that inflation is over 9%. However, according to shadow stats, if the method used was the same as it was back in the 80s, inflation would actually be over 17%. And so you've probably noticed that major retailers have put limit prices on many food items, including baby formula. And even Amazon's now saying they're gonna start charging you a 5% fuel and inflation surcharge. Have you been seeing the pattern since I started doing these My Patriot Supply plugs once a month since the summer? You know, the reason why I started doing them is because I saw this coming and I only sponsor the products that I personally use myself. So go to preparewithspace.com and order an emergency food kit for you and your family. Each kit contains a wide variety of meals averaging over 2,000 calories per day. The best part, in my opinion, is that they'll last up to 25 years. So you can store them away with a little peace of mind knowing that they'll be there when you need them. Food is a commodity, so I consider it an investment. 
And right now you can save $150 off a three month food kit. That's preparewithspace.com. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a nominal work week. And until next time, Godspeed. Four.